हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू टिप्स इन न्यूरोलॉजी एपिसोड थ्री एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट गिलेन बारे सिंड्रोम आल्सो कॉल्ड एज जीबीएस रिसेंटली वी हैव हर्ड अबाउट सर्च ऑफ जीबीएस केसेस इन पुणे बट इट इज नॉट समथिंग न्यू दिस डिजीज इज वेल नोन फॉर पास सेवरल डिकेट्स एंड वी हैव बीन सींग इट यू नो फॉर पास सेवरल ईयर्स सो द फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज वॉट इज गिलेन बारे सिंड्रोम so it's a neurological disease which is very sudden onset and it rapidly progresses and causes weakness and paralysis of legs hands and if not treated in time it can be even fatal so then that brings us to second point what are the most common symptoms so most commonly the symptoms begin with weakness in both the legs so the person may have difficulty in walking getting up from sitting position climbing stairs and over a period of one or two or three days the weakness comes to the trunk also the patient may have difficulty in turning on the bed getting up from lying down position and then the weakness in the arms so difficulty raising arm over the shoulder height picking an object and then finally the person may have difficulty in speaking swallowing and breathing difficulty so as you can see the symptoms can be very mild or it can progress to very severe conditions also then the third point is for how long these symptoms can get worse so typically gilen barre syndrome is an acute disease which starts off suddenly but the progression can occur up to a maximum of 28 days so we don't see gbs patients getting worse beyond 28 days but in most cases the worsening will happen in the first few days up to a maximum of one week but by definition it can get worse up to one month also what are the common causes of uh, gilen barre syndrome so usually it is after an infection so it is post infectious the common underlying infections may be respiratory uh, where the person may have fever cough runny nose or it can be gastrointestinal where the person may have stomach pain loose stools and uh, and then uh, both viral and bacterial infections can be seen and uh, secondly it can happen after vaccines also almost uh, every vaccine has been impl- implicated uh, where uh, these cases can occur so and then there is a gap of about a uh, few days up to about 2 weeks after the infection or vaccine uh, when the symptoms uh, begin then the number 5 point is uh, what are the main uh, findings on examination when we start examining what are the main findings so the person has weakness of both legs or all four limb that is legs and arms and then when we check something called as deep tendon reflexes they are either absent or they are very very sluggish what is called as hyporeflexia so these are two hallmarks on examination sensory findings are not common but if you carefully examine they may be impairment of joint position and vibration sense and the person may have mild sensory symptoms like tingling and numbness so the weakness is the main feature and then the sixth point is uh, how do we confirm the diagnosis so in that the first one is nerve conduction studies where we stimulate the nerves and record the conduction velocity amplitude and various other parameters and based on that we can classify into two types one is the axonal type where the main uh, core of the nerves are affected or the demyelinating type where the myelin sheath that is the covering of the nerves they, that gets damaged the more common type is the demyelinating type and that also has a better outcome or prognosis as compared to the axonal type of gbs the seventh point is the next test that we routinely do is something called as csf analysis or lumbar puncture or spinal tap where fluid is withdrawn from the lower back and that is sent for analysis typically in gbs we see little bit elevation of the cell counts but the protein is elevated and sugar in the csf is normal so that is what we see in a demyelinating illness like uh, gbs and then the eighth point is uh, treatment so in treatment the two main types of treatment that we give are immunoglobulins that is injections so it is usually given as 2 grams per kg body weight and the entire dose is split into 5 days so it is given over 5 days period other equally effective treatment is called as plasma exchange so these two sh- treatments should be started as early as possible because outcomes are better if the treatment is started uh, promptly and then so that brings us to the ninth point how is the outcome of uh, patients with gbs so outcome is generally good for those who have mild gbs or those of, of the patients who have severe gbs if the treatment is started early again they have a better outcome 
and some patients may progress rapidly requiring uh, mechanical ventilation icu care so if the best care is provided then uh, almost 95% people or even more than that they recover of course some people may require prolonged hospitalization prolonged icu care and uh, then when they remain in the icu for a long time then we need to take care of their nutrition uh, uh, prevent infections so if all the best care is given then more than 95% people survive so it's a good outcome and uh, but if small number of people can develop what is called as severe autonomic dysfunction where the pulse rate heart rate bp they fluctuate and then you know sometimes we lose uh, such severely ill patients and then the last point or the 10th point is can gbs recur so the good news is that uh, people uh, suffer from gbs only once in a lifetime but a small number say 2 or 3% of people may have recurrent gbs where it can recur after a number of years or after a few months but, but that is not a norm normally it's a monophasic illness occurs only once so i hope you learned something new and then uh, have a good day